Mr. Minnick, helping my beginner Python students learn how to trace for loops. Worksheet number one, uh, reading the directions, trace the following code segments, showing the values for each variable over here in the columns. Uh, it also says write infinite if a loop never ends, and circle the final values stored in each variable at the end of the code segment. So let's start with uh, uh, exercise one. This is a code segment, not a complete program that would do anything interesting. So we start with the first line of code. And uh, the first line of code here is sum equals zero. So the right-hand side plugs into the left-hand side. That's a rule of thumb that just works in coding forever and ever and ever. Right to left, right to left. That's what that equals means, right to left. Remember that before you go to bed, say it a thousand times, right to left. That zero plugs in the sum. Now, I've already done that for you, but if I hadn't, you would have written a zero there. So check. We did that line of code. We'll never come back to it again. It's not inside a loop, you see, so we're never coming back, and it's not inside of a function. So we ne that's done. Okay, this line of code. It's a for statement. The whole thing is known as a for loop. The body of the for loop is indented. Sum equals sum plus one. So let's look at the for loop closely i is called the loop variable. It's traditional to use the, the variable name i. And I'm using the built-in range function of Python here. So what that means is that the variable i starts at the value 1, which I've already recorded for you, so you don't have to do that. You're welcome. Then it goes through the loop, and that's called an iteration when you go through the loop, and you do whatever's in the loop. It could be one or more lines of indented code. Okay, sum equals sum plus one. Right to left, right to left, right to left. You simplify what's on the right-hand side of the equals, and that simplified number plugs into the left, just like up here, zero, one over there. So sum plus one, what the heck is that? Well, sum is currently zero, so think of that as a zero, or with your pencil, put a little zero there. Sorry about that, I just bumped something. Sorry about that. Um, so the zero gets added to one, and you can do that in your head. It's a total of one, and that one plugs into the variable sum. What a coincidence. Sum is here and sum is there. Well, it doesn't matter. That zero is now the number one that plugged in over there. So cross this out with a single slash, not an X. Don't erase. Don't use a magic marker to blot it out. Like a good accountant, we just put single slashes through numbers that are wrong so that the person who catches us embezzling next year knows where we uh, cook the books, which I guess we would not want to do that. But anyway, so, so far so good. There's a one there. Now, we're done with the loop on the first iteration. Now Python knows, because you're in a for loop, to go back up to the top. So... We go back up to the top of the for loop, and here's the tricky part. The way the for loop works is that i steps up by one. We call it incrementing something. In to increment means to add one. So the variable i steps up to two. That's just how i as the loop control variable works. It's on its way to four, but right now it's at two. And now we go through the loop a second time. And we do whatever's in the body of the loop. Sum equals sum plus i, plus 1, I mean. So sum, which is currently 1, gets added to this plus 1 for a grand total of 2. And that 2 goes right to left, right to left, right to left. Always remember, right to left. That 2 plugs into sum, which on our scratch paper, we need to cross out that 1 and make it a 2. Do not do this kind of stuff in your head as a beginner, because you'll get it wrong at some point. And even as an expert, somebody will trick you, and if you go too fast and try to do too much stuff in your head, you get it wrong. I've learned. Okay, so, so far so good. We just went through the loop a second time, and now we go back up to the top of the for loop for another go around. This time, the variable i steps up by one, up to three. So cross that two out over there and make it a three. And we go through the body of the loop yet again. Now currently the variable sum, right to left, right to left, right to left, the variable sum over here on the right is currently two. 
So whether you put the two in there and erase it later or something, or just do this part in your head, it's up to you to figure it out. But I'm, I'm just showing you how I plug a two in there. On my scratch paper, I put the two plus one, that's the three. That three goes right to left. And the three plugs in for sum, which over here is being kept track of. Single slash three. These are not meant to line up horizontally. It's just sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, these two columns. So three is currently stored in sum because of that right to left. We go back up to the top of the for loop. And here is where it ends because here's the rule in Python. Because of the way range works, you stop just before you get to this number. This is the final value for i that needs to be circled according to the directions of my worksheet. And if you don't circle those things, I have the right to take the point off, by the way. I'm fussy like that. Other teachers, professors might not care, but I care. So that 3 gets circled there for i. It's kind of like that 4 is a stop sign. Someday when you guys drive, you don't like drive into the stop sign. You stop like a foot before it, maybe even a yard like a little buffer area. So this three is like right before the four. That's how I think of it. That's how I think of this. If you want to think of it separately, that's on your own. Okay, we're now finished with the for loop because it knows to stop just before it's, in this case, one away from that four, that upper boundary of four. So we don't go through the sum equals sum plus one statement again. And the final value of sum in this exercise is three. Do exercise number two. Sum is initialized to zero, so that check mark that right to left thing. I starts at 11, so that's already been done for you. We go through the loop. Now, in this case, I'm using the fancy compound operator, which is really just overall that line of code is equivalent, the same as that line of code. It's just shorthand coder notation for saying take whatever's on the right hand side and add it into the variable name that's on the left. So one gets added into sum. Okay, check that. We go back up to the top of the for loop. Uh, I steps up to 12, because that's just how it works. Like it did before, only it was one to two, but here it's 11 to 12, because the starting point of 11. We go through the loop. So one gets added to sum. In other words, sum is incremented, as we say. Sum is up to two. We go back up to the top of the loop. I bumps up to 13, because that's what it does. So cross that 12 out and make it a 13. Uh, we go through the loop. So sum plus equals 1 makes sum's new value a 3. And we go back up to the top of the loop where we hit the brakes. Because we realize if I steps up by one more, it runs over the stop sign. It hits the 14, which is illegal in Python. So it stops there. It just knows to stop. The loop terminates, we sometimes say. So for my answer purposes, I want you to circle a 13 as the final value for i. And the final value of sum is 3. Now, some people would say exercise 2 is the same as exercise 1. Because some people, they just care what like the involved variable sum ends up being. But it's technically a different exercise because the variable, the loop variable i ends up with a different value and that technically makes them different exercises. Okay, exercise number three. Sum starts at zero, Ch check that. i starts at one, so far so good. Oh my gosh, I have three numbers in the parentheses. Well, we'll get to that. Okay, sum plus equals one. We go through the body of the loop this first time, so sum is bumped up to one. Now here's how number three is different from one and two. Because of this third parameter, that's the step amount for the for loop. If there's a third parameter, it's usually some number other than one. Because that means we take i and we step it up by two. So add two to this one over here and you get three. So keep careful track of this stuff. Sometimes, matters in a big way. Now we haven't hit the five yet. The five is still kind of like the stop sign. So we go through the loop again and we do the sum plus equals one. So sum bumps up to two. We go back up to the top of the loop. We check out the, the step amount and we realize, whoa, if I added this two to the current value of i, three plus two, it would be five 
which is like hitting my stop sign. So we don't add two here, just like we didn't add one more up in number two to get to 14, and we did not add the step amount, the implicit step amount, the default step amount of one in the previous two problems to hit those stop signs. So this problem just petered out at this point. It was just a relatively short loop. I stopped at three and some stopped at two. That's just the way that exercise uh, worked. Number exercise four, sum is zero, check that. I starts at three, check mark. Ooh, interesting, the step amount is a negative. Okay, we do the sum plus equals one. Okay, so sum bumps up to one. But the second time around the for loop, we add negative one to the three that I is currently storing, which by the way, three plus negative one equals two. We're not at the stop sign of zero yet, so we go through the loop. Uh, we add one to sum, now it sums up to two. We go back up the top of the loop. We add negative one in over here to i. Uh, it's down to the positive number one, so it's going down, kind of interesting. i is going down in this problem. And uh, sum plus equals one sums up to three. And then we go around the loop again, and we realize if we add a negative one in, to one, we would hit zero, which is this middle parameter, which in this case is the stop amount. So we don't go any further. We're done executing this loop. We circle the final value of sum there as three, and I ended up being the number one. And sum is starting at zero, I starts at one. Oh. The body statement here, from right to left, right to left, right to left, this two from right to left, gets added into whatever sum is. Oh, interesting, for the first time in this worksheet, sum is going up by an amount other than just ones. Okay, interesting, noted. Uh, we go back up to the top of the for loop. In this case, because there are only two parameters uh, in the parentheses, the default step amount is one, which means I goes up by one, it increments to two. We go through the body of the loop now. Sum is going up by this amount of two, so it's up to four now. We go back up to the top of the for loop. I has the ability to go up to three here, which it does. We go through the body of the loop. Sum has two added to it for a grand total of six so far. We go back up to the top of the for loop and we realize, whoops, we don't want to go any further because three would hit four because it's currently going up by ones. So circle that three and circle the six, you're done. Little interesting, uh, sum went up by twos instead of the boring ones that all these elementary exercises on this first worksheet I had before that. Number six, ooh, sum starts at 10. That's like somebody putting $10 in your bank account the day you were born. They gave you like a free $10 so you didn't have to save up right from uh, you know day one of your infant life. Okay, so uh, noted sum has the number 10 written under there, check mark. Okay, I starts at one, same old boring one there for I. Oh, sum minus equals one. That means subtract one from the current value of sum. It's kind of like from right to left, but minus equals. So sum is down to nine. And we go back up to the top of this for loop and I bumps up to two. We go through the loop, so one gets subtracted from sum, sum's down to eight. We go back up to the top, I bumps up to three. We go through the loop where sum is going down, what a bummer, it's down to seven. I keeps going up as we go back up to the top of the loop. I, oh, I stops because it would hit four. So we stop, put on the brakes, circle the three. It's good you're using pencil because if you went too far there by accident, you could always erase it and fix it. And then seven's the final value there. Now there's a formula built into your lecture notes. Uh, you can't see it because it's off the screen over here uh, right now that's on this worksheet. But if you have the variable low and the variable high, uh, there you go. But you can put variables inside the range function if you want to. So if if, if uh, low is like 1 and high is 4, you should subtract them. So the lecture notes pretty much tell you that you just take high minus low. And whatever that 
simplifies to, that's how many loop iterations you would have had overall if you just care about loop iterations. It has nothing to do with the final value of sum in these exercises, and it requires it to be a step of one. This formula does not work when your step is like negative one here, or two, or any other odd number. There might be a formula. I think Einstein came up with a formula when it's a step of like two or three, and then uh, somebody like threw away his journal and we can't find it. So if somebody knows the formula, uh, let me know via email, uh, Snapchat me, instant message me, or however you can get a hold of me. Or just tell me in school tomorrow and I'll be uh, a little bit impressed that you've figured out what Einstein's lost track of uh, with that formula. But this is a formula you have to know when it's the normal step by one, high minus low. Okay, number eight. So, oh, I squeezed one in on this worksheet I didn't mean to, where you have only one number in the parentheses of range. Okay, well, that's the same thing as, uh, it's, not, it's, it's really the same thing as range, parentheses 0, comma, 10. So anytime you have just one number in the parentheses, pretend that it's a 0, comma, that number. So high minus low in that case would be 10 minus 0. So trust me, if you counted how many times hello world prints out there, it's going to be 10 times. And uh, number 9 on the worksheet, you should be able to do that yourself, but I'll just do it what the heck here on this uh, video. I can't really scroll here, so you know what? Uh, oh, there you go. Uh, number 9... High minus low there would be 10 minus 1 for a total of 9. 9 loop, loop iterations. It's different from the number 8, which was like 0 comma 10. And I'm not doing this one for you. That's it. I'm not subtracting that. Don't tell me the answer right now of uh, period 10 or 11. That You should be able to subtract that in your head, even without a calculator, because you go to why I'm missing, and that's just the way that is.